understanding of chimp behavior today helps us to understand the way in which our early ancestors may have lived. Because I think it makes sense to say any behavior shared by the modern chimpanzee and the modern human was probably present in the common ancestor. And if it was present in the common ancestor, therefore in early man. A mechanical leopard was instrumental in an experiment with chimpanzees conducted by scientists from the University of Amsterdam. Anthropologists have long puzzled over how our ancestors defended themselves against predators. How could such small creatures, not yet intelligent enough to make stone weapons, have possibly survived? Leopards are natural predators of chimpanzees. Here, as the chimps attack, we catch a glimpse of how our ancestors, having left the safety of the trees, may have first met the challenges of life on the ground. Once the leopard is decapitated, the chimp may not comprehend that it is dead, but it clearly knows the enemy is no longer a threat. If a chimpanzee has the intelligence to defend itself with natural weapons, it seems likely our early ancestors did the same. The chimpanzee has never become an habitual upright walker. Why did we? Upright walking is so fundamental we seldom think about it. And yet it is one of the crucial ways we are set apart from all other mammals on Earth. When did our ancestors take that first tentative step out of the trees to brave the vast African landscapes? Important answers would be found in the Afar Triangle region of Ethiopia. Here, in 1974, an international expedition of 15 specialists headed out to the remote badlands known as Hadar. Co-leader of the team, Dr. Donald Johansson, describes himself as superstitious. After two frustrating months on the sun-scorched slopes, he woke up one morning feeling lucky, and so noted in his diary. Later that very day, the team discovered bones that made headlines around the world. At the time, the oldest, most complete hominid ever found. To anthropologists who usually consider themselves lucky to recover a tooth or a broken fragment of bone, this 40% complete skeleton was a bonanza. Nicknamed Lucy, she quickly became the object of intense study. What is most exceptional uh, about a skeleton, as complete as Lucy, is all of the information that we as anthropologists can glean from a skeleton like this. For example, uh, looking at her femur or her thigh bone, which is only about 12 inches in length, we know that she was no taller than three and a half or four feet. Uh, now that brings up the question of, well, was, was it perhaps a child? If we look at the state of development, for example, of the third molar or the wisdom tooth, is fully erupted and is already beginning to wear, so that relative to modern humans, she was an adult when she died. We're able to tell from the weight-bearing area of the hip socket, for example, she probably only weighed about 50 or 55 pounds. From uh, the size of the brain case, there is enough of the brain case preserved to suggest to us that the brain was very small about one-fourth the size of a modern human brain. Historically, large brains have been considered the fundamental human trait. In the 20s, when Raymond Dart suggested a small brain creature walked upright, he had only a skull to work with. Here was a significant portion of a skeleton, a creature with some very ape-like features that walked upright. Lucy had an ape-like brain, a human-like skeleton, 
and teeth, both ape and human-like, a startling mixture of traits. Yet clearly she was a hominid, a member of the family of man. <laughs> 